Hey guys, welcome back to the show today. We have Sammy Lawyer in the studio. What's up, man? How are you? Yeah, you it's a pleasure having you here, man. Thank you. Beautiful studio you've got here. I walked in and I was like, yo, okay, I'm getting ideas. <laughs> OCD guys. Yeah, yeah. No, I love it, man. I love it. This is a dream setup. Before I was in Bitcoin, I was a tech YouTuber. So I learned everything back to front, but it was always filming phones and stuff. Yeah. When you start filming people, just skin tones, bro, like white and brown, it's, it's difficult. <laughs> it's game over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've made it as simple as possible so I can just hit record, hit end recording and upload it straight to YouTube. If there's a blooper, I don't even care. Because you know, for me, what's really important is if you start having a lot of resistance as a creator, like one of the things people want to see as a creator is that authenticity. They want to see uh, like the, the rawness, because you can make something nice and polished and that's cool and there's a time and a place. But if what you're going for is to show people like, look, this is me, we're just having a conversation, we're chilling. It's real. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, if you start putting these barriers up of like, oh, you got to go in post and color correct and audio and everything, it just gets, you know, I just want to, I want to do something and fire it out and do something and fire it out. And because yeah. that's what people want to see. They don't care about the little like 2% adjustment in audio. Yeah. They want the actual content. Yeah, that's so true. And it takes time to get, because of course you've been doing it for so long that you are super pro at it. But for me, I literally just started my journey. The most difficult one was the first video. So obsessed with perfection that it was chopping everything off, it wasn't even sound natural. Because sometimes, you know, I had to correct myself because I was saying, uh, mm, uh, a lot. So what I was doing, I was going into the editing and chopping, chopping, chopping. So then I sounded like a robot yeah. because I was chopping myself out too much. I'm not there yet, so, because you are, of course, you have more experience. But I got to a point where I'm like, yeah, let's keep it as real as possible. Sometimes I, I take away small things, maybe imperfection in the sound, but I think I'm going to embrace it, like you said, and it's getting easier because you know the more that you do, the better you become. Treat the camera like a person, which is much easier said than done. But if you do treat the camera just like it's a person, like I'm, I'm just imagining, like I've met a lot of my fans and I'll just sit across from them like on a dinner table and I'll talk to them the same way I'm talking to you, the same way I talk to the camera. I so I just kind of imagine like, okay, this is just one of the guys I've met, you know, and they're happy to talk, so I'm happy to talk back, you know? It's, yeah. it's like that. I love that. I'm going to give the camera a name <laughs> so that I yeah. know. <laughs> That's smart. I like that. Personify it. Be a female name, so it's going to engage me a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, brilliant. But hey, you know, you have such an amazing story. How do you got into crypto? Oh, man. So, um, like I said, I was doing the tech videos, filming smartphone reviews, MKBHD style. And I had always wanted to be in crypto. I'd always wanted to be some sort of investment banker or something. I, I watched Suits and I thought that was a yeah. cool lifestyle. So I was kind of like looking for that, but I was 15 years old and you know, like it just wasn't accessible yet. But one of my friends who was making tech videos put on Twitter that he turned $13 into 200 um, just through being in Bitcoin over the last like one or two years. And I was like, and this is early 2017. Yeah. So I was like, you know, like I thought there's no way to get in crypto. And I thought it's like the, the barrier for entry was so technical and so high that I can't do it. But here is kind of like a colleague. I mean, I don't work with him, but like someone that does the exact same thing as me, presumably has the same level of skill and intelligence as me already doing it. So I was like, all right, I need to jump in on this. So I just asked him, hey, where'd you buy it? It was one of the exchanges that went bust, which is, I think that kind of makes the story a little bit sweeter. Like, you know, you started off on an exchange that now doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, I like that. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I kind of did the same thing as him. He had gripped my f***ing life, yeah. o overtook everything, <laughs> changed my life too. So that was cool. Yeah, 15 years old, bought my first Bitcoin, bought my first Ethereum. Every single first trade that I made, like every, every one of my first trades was horrible. Absolutely horrible. I remember going on the Telegram groups and I was like, Hey guys, is now a good time to buy Doge? <laughs> I'll never forget, you know, they just started laughing at me. I was like, yo, why are you laughing at me? You know, cause I got this 10 pound course off Udemy from Superman. Do you know Superman? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he was like pretty OG, you know, yeah, back in like 2017. OG. Yeah. So um, it kind of all started like that. And, you know, meanwhile I was still in school and, you know, I really hated school. I hated school since I was like seven, eight years old. I was dedicated Same. to dropping out, you know, but, but this is, you know, back here I was 15 years old. I still kind of had to take everything seriously. I wanted to have a nice paying job. I wanted to, you know, be, be successful. I wanted to have a lot of money and stuff like that. And I still had that pressure. So I was kind of like half in crypto, half in tech, half in school. Uh, but, you know, as crypto started to, you know, sh as I started to see that, you know, this is actually something you can make money off, um, I became more serious with it, you know, bit by bit. And, and it got to the point where I could not bring myself to give a f about school. I mean, like <laughs> I, I, I even tried. 
Um, it eventually got to the stage where 2018 bear market, I paid for a beautiful lavish vacation, a beautiful lavish vacation right there, bro, like somewhere around there. Amazing. Uh, I don't know if you want me to say where we are, but yeah, yeah, no, no problem. Yeah. So, so on the pond, basically, yeah. like just further down, it was on the rig so it was like five thousand dollars. I paid for a beautiful vacation with my mom, and that was the first time that I kind of like became like the man of the house in some way, you know, like taking care of things, making sure everyone's eating, stuff like that. And I was what, like sixteen at this point. I mean, I was I was young, sixteen, seventeen. I don't, yeah, probably probably something like that. I can't even remember now. And then, you know, the, the thing was, I came back, this was winter holiday, I came back to school and my teachers were like, you know, where's the coursework, where's the, you know, this, this, you know, and I was like, listen, you know, and they were like, you know, <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna have a detention now. And I was like, are you f serious? Like, you know, after what I just did, you know, and like knowing, and I, I probably made a couple hundred thousand at that point or something like that, you know, so I was like, all right, like, I clearly don't need this education for money either. Uh, you know, and, I, and before this, I had one little job that lasted a couple of months. My boss was, uh, was someone like me. I mean, someone super young who made a yeah, shitload of made. money. Yeah, and, um, and and he kind of, um, he showed me like, you know, you don't need to be, you know, in, in mainstream education to make money. So I saw it in so many different ways. Uh, you know, the people that were around me, I, I grew up with friends that were 13, 14 years old, launching their first businesses at the same time as me, because I did that at 13 too. And all of these guys are living amazing lives. Obviously some dropped off, it's not for everybody. So it brought 100%, it's really 100% of the people that stuck to it, and we're going back like nine, 10 years now, okay? I mean, yeah. it's not a short amount of time, but 100% of the people that did not give up are now amazingly successful. That's, that's really impressive. It's not like there's an exception. 100% of them. I think that's really cool. I think that's something to, th to, to really think about. Like, it almost doesn't matter what you're doing if you stick to it for like, you know, and 10 years is not a short amount of time. If you can't do it, the life is not for you. But if you can stick for it, just stick to it, it's almost guaranteed, bro, that you're going to work it out. You can't... You can't do things for such a long amount of time and not find a way to make it work. I agree. There is a there is a fantastic quote. I don't remember like how exactly it says, but the core of the quote is 90% of the salespeople give up just before they are selling something. Yeah. Which means the 10% in the market selling is gonna sell for the hundred percent because they the other salespeople have given up. And, right? and this is this is a nice part of it because it kind of means like, you know, the, the entry like if you are actually about it, if you are actually able to put that effort in, you know, like you're kind of cleaning up everything that nobody else took exactly. off the plate. Exactly. So um so yeah, it's 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 you know your competition isn't strong. If and, and this is not to discourage people, but you know, like if you actually feel like you can do it, then you know you only need to overcome this activation energy. And once you get above it, you're you're getting everything. It's exponential. Like in the internet world, if you're doing anything online, like once you cross that barrier, you're cleaning up. You know, like the, the gap like to go from 1k a month to 10k a month to 100 k a month, you'll be surprised at how quickly it's possible if you're putting that effort into scaling and so on. And you know you know what I love about this, by the way? I'm so glad you're here with us today because ever since I moved to Dubai, I basically put another gear into it. I mean, I, I've been grinding my entire life, you know, like I, I was washing dishes when I was young. I, I left school, you know, I had any job, you name it, I've done it. I had my own businesses. But that's how I believe, based, based on my experiences, you succeed because you learn every time you do something, right? I've never heard of someone who has gone from nothing to a business and boom, $20 million or whatever, he made it, you know, his or she. They've probably gone through some, some learning processes. And all those things we see, they never meant to be it in the first place. They had to pivot. I love oh, yeah. the, the ability to pivot, right, to change. So I think going through life is the same thing, right? Like, Mate, my, my journey was exactly what you just described. <laughs> like, it was, it's really interesting because, so I started off, I've been a YouTuber since I was eight years old. So it does come somewhat naturally to me at this point. I can tell. <laughs> and, um, I, but, but here's what's interesting is like, I learned Photoshop skills back when I was like 12. You know, I like really, Photoshop skills, but like at least I knew my way around it. Final Cut or Adobe Premiere or whatever the hell, After Effects, whatever it was, Windows Movie Maker, bro, it didn't matter. <laughs> Anything. Yeah. All of these skills, and, and then you know, there were there was other little bits here and there. All of these skills came together when I got into crypto because just by sheer coincidence, I was like, well, shit, I'm a YouTuber already, <laughs> and now I know how to analyze the markets, and now I know how to trade the markets. Bring it together, together and you got four flies, you know? So, yeah. so and that's that's literally how it happened. So, like, I didn't have to, and th this was a big advantage for me, is that. And, and they were very unrelated skills. I mean, you know, media with trading, you can never imagine. And, uh, and, and, and so it was, it was just all by sheer coincidence, all this stuff kind of came together. Right? I mean, when I was running my business, I was, I was doing sales work. Like I had to actually convince people. I was on Skype calls with people. I was emailing, cold calling, cold emails, whatever. Yeah. I, I did it all, bro. I did absolutely everything. <laughs> and, yeah. and none of it worked. None of it worked until the trading stuff, by the way. I mean, it was like a couple hundred dollars, maybe a couple thousand at most, but that was it. You know, like really nothing big at all. Um, you know, per month even. So it's so really just not that much money. But then in crypto, all of it came together and it was like, all right, I've got that skill set, that skill set, that skill set. 
don't need to hire people, bro. I was running my whole company all by myself for like years, mm. years, man. I mean, I didn't, I didn't need to. And now we're at a point where I've got a CEO, I've got a personal well, assistant, course, I've got so, an analyst. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and like, I was actually talking to somebody about this yesterday. It's like, you know, so like, what do you do every day? Like mm. as a trader, I'm like nothing, bro. <laughs> like I have yeah. the most empty schedule that, that you could you could ever imagine. My calendar is completely empty, but I'm way too busy for meetings. Why? Look, I'm putting my time into personal life and so on. And it's because I've been able to set it up in a way where my team is doing everything for me. And this is this is really important. Like as a trader, um, you know, one of the other things I was saying, this guy wanted to become a trader. I was telling him, look, if you're not in that position, you know, you can't. Most people can't outsource their entire you know existence to other yeah. people. Um, you know, but but it's a nice place to get to when, when you want to be there because you really have that mental capacity to make all the big decisions. You know, if you're not worrying about mm -hmm. like I'm just moving house right now, I didn't have to do any of the moving stuff or yeah. even coordinating the people at all. If you're not worrying about that stuff, I can be like you know having that mental space to look at the Bitcoin chart, for example. This is really interesting, I think, as a trader because everyone's like, oh, you need a lot of time to learn and stuff like that. That's true. You need the time to learn the ABCs to to learn the chart patterns, the patterns and, yeah. and, or if it's TA or if it's FA or whatever you're doing. Um, you need to put the time in to learn that stuff. But, uh, you know, once you've done that as a trader, um, not having time is a really good thing. You know, like if, if you've got unlimited time to trade or even like one hour a day to trade, if you've got one hour a day to trade, you have one hour a day to f things up. You know, and, and this is something that I think people don't really think about. Like as a trader, as a sensible trader who's not day trading because day trading is not sensible, what you need to do is set your plan for the market, look at the chart, look at what you think is going to happen, set your plan, and then go away. Go hit the gym, go walk your dog, do anything that's not trading related because the market hasn't met your conditions yet. Like if you've got like, if Bitcoin hits 26K, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. Or if Bitcoin hits 28K, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. If you've got those parameters set, then you yeah, have nothing good. to do until those parameters are met. <laughs> yeah. So the only thing you can do is work on everything else that's not trading related. So your business, or like I said, fitness or food or whatever, like, I don't know, learn to cook or something, I don't care. Just don't look at the charts. And this is why actually like having a full-time job, for example, is incredibly useful as a trader. But I can't tell you the amount of times I've been in a position, a literal trading position, where I was like, if I just went to sleep instead of <laughs> instead of took profits or instead of moved my stop loss, if I just went to sleep, I would have made so much more money, you know, because the original plan yeah. was really good. Yeah. And, and you don't have to, you know, but if you're just sitting there looking at the charts, you're so much more likely to deviate from your plan. You're so much more likely to panic. And God forbid you're on these horrible Discord Telegram groups, you know, where everyone else is sitting there cranking away at their keyboard while the Bitcoin price is crashing. You're going to feel their sheep energy yeah exactly yeah, and, yeah. and it's gonna i've been there man i'm, I'm saying this with accuracy because i've been that guy you know and uh, and you're gonna end up making bad decisions because of it so really the number one thing you need to do is separate yourself just don't do anything do you know, make your plan and then go away and wait for the alert on your phone to come and tell you look bitcoin's at this price now and that's it and then you yeah. look again for like five minutes set your new plan and you're off again you said so many amazing things i think that we could spin off like 12 podcasts <laughs> it's amazing i, I think to, to go back and, and touch on the school i i think definition of intelligence in my book, intelligence means the ability to connect things. Like I, I can know five things really well and I can connect those five and interlink them and I will be intelligent. School is designed to teach you how to be like, how to become like a soldier and how to be a slave. I, that's my opinion. That's not intelligence. There is a fantastic book that talks about it. It's like judging a monkey and a fish. Who's the best? Oh, it depends. Like the monkey can't swim as good as the fish. The fish can climb trees as good as the monkey. So why we're judging monkey and fish? So we are different yeah. people. Like I, I could be the monkey, you could be the fish, and you know we have the same test. And I'm excelling the test, so I'm better. Yeah, yeah, it's weird, man. I mean, even even the way how you learn. I, I'm really creative. I need I need colors in my life. I need music. I need to be involved. I'm a people person. Put me into a into a desk and make me memorize <laughs> from yeah. a storybook. Like it it's so work. like anti-human, and and I think honestly, I think AI is gonna help with this. I, I really do. Like I I've started to think like okay, give the kids a basic <laughs> yeah yeah give give the kids a basic level of education so that they can be in society, and then give them ChatGPT. You know, <laughs> like <laughs> you've just erased like six years of school potentially because <laughs> yeah. it's just not you know. And, and another thing that I found really interesting is that people who don't have a conventionally strong education, I talk to them. I don't feel like they've got like a worse view of the world. You know, a lot of the time we talk about now, like universities are indoctrinating people to become very too far on the left wing, for example, on the spectrum, yeah. for example, yeah. and stuff like that. You know, and that's a real thing. That is definitely happening. So it's like, are you being educated or miseducated? I'll tell you what, one of my favorite things about school though, is that typically they will produce really good employees. So you're like, if that's what you're going for, <laughs> if that's what you're going for, then come, come apply to me yeah. and, uh, and, and I'll see what's up, you know, cause, cause that, and I saw something else really interesting. 
if we consider that going to a school like Harvard is going to ruin you because you're going to be like too left wing or whatever, for ex for an example, mm -hmm. then perhaps the best thing to do is get accepted into Harvard and then not go. <laughs> <laughs> right, because it shows that you've made the cut, exactly. but you haven't gone far like enough to actually through. suffer the consequences. Maybe, yeah. Just a thought, just a thought, I don't know. But um, I've met a lot of people from very fancy universities. I've met a lot of people who have not even finished high school. You know, one of the things I found really interesting was when I was selling, and I still am selling uh, my, my VAP group where I teach people how to trade and stuff like yeah. that. You know, I, I used to market it very aggressively, a lot less these days. Uh, I'm just not really, it's just not really something that I'm running too much these days. When it was popping off, there were times where I was charging like $20,000 to people, you know, like for, for our biggest package. And not one time, bro, did anybody ask me if I finished high school, university or any of that shit. They just wanted to know, can Sammy make me money? That's it. That's all they wanted to know. Yeah. If I could make the money, they don't care if I'm a convict, bro. That's, that's yeah. just how the real world is. The books that we study have, have been written by who won the battle. So it's like, I remember when I was in London, I, was, uh, I had a friend and he was saying to me, when we got invaded by other people, they were throwing all the books in the rivers and the rivers changed the color because of the ink. Uh -huh. So they basically, they conquer people, they burn all the books, they rewrite history, and then that's it. You're learning, not even the real, you're not even learning the real thing. That, the that is the scary thing about history. And it's so obvious that what you just said is indeed the case because it happens in the present day as well. So like we see it happening right now where things that are just outright false, we're not yeah. we're not gonna go into that, but like I mean, we've seen so many examples in yeah. just the last couple of years. Yeah. Things that are just outright false get put diff definitions get changed, bro. The dictionaries it's, like, <laughs> yeah. it's so typical of like 1984 and stuff like that. But this becomes history that people will study, and it becomes known yeah. as fact. So it's like okay, all of this happening now. How much of that happened hundreds of years ago? Like it, it yeah. is scary. I mean, look, I'm a, I'm a massive history guy. It's one of my favorite subjects yeah, to, to read yeah. about. Um, but as I read about it, I'm always just kind of like on the side over here. I'm like kind of upset knowing that like, you know, how much of this is actually real versus like just something fun to read about because some priest, you know, got control. Exactly. And then, you know, I completely agree with you. And, and the other thing I wanted to touch on, which was super amazing, was your network is your net worth, right? Surround yourself with people. They will encourage you because majority will drag you down. I remember when I was a smoker for a long time, about 20 years, two packs a day, red Marlboro, like really heavy smoker. And then one day I said, that's it. I don't want to smoke anymore. So I quit. All my friends, come on, have one, man. Come right. on. Because I reminded them they could also quit. Same with the YouTube channel. You know, um, I started off, I, I made 20 videos and I'm like, oh, I have only 20 views, 30 views, five views. Majority of the people give up so early. I was reading on, on statistics on YouTube, like there is something like 20% of the channels have gone over a thousand subscribers or something like this, which means there is a 70, 80%, which is a lot. New channel coming up, making five videos. Oh, well, you know, I made five videos now. I'm not a millionaire yet. <laughs> I mean, are you kidding me yeah you have to show up it's going to take time and then exactly like you said when you manage to to leave that kind of area you get everybody who's there because everybody else everybody else has left yeah. right? I, I tell you what i i actually before i was known for what i do i was a voice actor for a really short period of time oh wow well, yeah know that. Super, super weird no one knows and um one of the books that i narrated or i think that i was gonna narrate was like um, it was it was like a Hinduism teaching book. It was it was weird. It was random, but because I had to narrate it, I had to read it. And I was like, "This is actually really interesting." And and there was this one conversation where you know the son is talking to God, and he's like, "So why can't we have everything we want in life?" And God replies back, "He's like, you already have everything you want in life. You just don't know you actually want it." And I sat there and I was like, "What does that mean?" And then I thought about the fact that people aren't able to get their together with the gym or with work or whatever and like but they want the money right they want the nice physique no what they want is what they really want and their actions clearly demonstrate this what they really want is that temporary comfort of eating that popcorn and going to the cinema mm -hmm. instead of spending those three hours in the fucking gym and then reading a book afterwards you know like it's it's like that and it's like you can apply this to absolutely any, anything that you think of what do you have versus what do you say you want and then you look at okay well you want this beautiful nice successful object over here but everything that you do in the short term shows that you just want that instant gratification. <laughs> yeah. So like, you know, what do you really want? Let's be honest with ourselves. Yeah. And I find that to be really useful um, just by sheer coincidence. Well, I was just auditioning for like audiobooks, bro. Like it's so random that this even came up. <laughs> but I um, love it. But, but, but this is what happens when you put yourself out there. You just do random sh at least something, something, right? Instead of like consuming, instead of watching or playing or whatever, you actually do something out in the real world. 
And you just get the ball moving. This is the number one thing is we need progress. We need the ball to move. We need to move in some direction. Even if it's backwards, we just need to move so that we don't stay stationary. Nothing yeah. happens when you're stationary. Indeed. And this is one thing I've seen, and I, I don't know if you agree, but in, in my view is like people, they always have <coughs> someone to blame, right? Yeah. And there is something, you know, when you point a finger, three fingers are pointing back, mm, right? At you, right? So when you say it's your fault, well, one goes that way, three goes that way. It is always your responsibility. But people don't want to take it because when you admit it, then you know there is on you to change it. People are saying, oh, I hate my job. I hate my, my, my relationship. F change it, man. You're not a tree. Like, do sh you don't you hate your job? Find another one. I like know? that line. You're not a tree. I mean, you can move, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, do something. I have lived my life always with this kind of mindset, which is accept or change. There is nothing in between because there's yeah. suffering in between. I, I accept. I say, okay, I accept this, which means I'm okay with it or I change it. I don't f in the middle. Where most of the people live nowadays, you know, they, like you said, they find comfort in, in junk food, in, in alcohol, in, you know, in drugs and all those things, in bad relationship. They didn't do anything to change it. I love challenges, bring it, you know? I, at the end of the day, I don't know what's gonna happen when I die. I don't have any specific religion, I don't care. I'm just enjoying life so much. I, I think it's one of the most beautiful gifts. And I'm like, I wanna learn as much as I can. So throw in the challenges, you know? If you want to learn how to swim, jump in the sea. So, okay, I'm in the sea, I'm learning, I'm dodging sharks and <laughs> drowning at point, but I'm loving it because it's making me. And then people looking at you with their safe job in their one house and their hating relationship they have and they go, ah, he or she was lucky. You know what? I used to say, F this, I'm not lucky. But now, what do you think you become? So I say to them, yes, I'm f***ing lucky. <laughs> yeah. I'm the luckiest. Because yeah. <laughs> you become what you think about. Right? I like that. Yeah, that's a good attitude. I want to be more lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and I love this. And this is life experience. It's, time is one of the most precious currency there is. So use it wisely, you know, and do what you love. Because if you, like you said in the beginning, if you focus on what you love, you cannot, it's failing is not even in the map. You can't fail, it's impossible. You know, I, I was thinking about this a lot a couple of months ago, I turned 22. And mm. man, I, like, people that know me in person know that I'm like very old for my age, like very old. I don't think like a 22 year old at all. Um, and, and this is something I thought about a lot recently is like, you know, you, you're gonna kind of almost a lot of the time without even knowing you're gonna pick your direction in life. And like you can make pivots. I mean, it's possible. We all heard, we've all heard of the Colonel Sanders story, you know, dude was like 58 and then made KFC. So like, sure, okay, but let's be real. You know, like, for the most part, you're picking your direction in life and that's kind of it, kind of. I mean, you know, like, you can make your pivots, but no matter what you do, you open another door, you're gonna close some more on the, on the other side. You know, and, and then we talk about time. It's like, well, shit. Like, you know, if you're, you know, if you're in your 20s or even in your teens, even in your teens, you've already got a defined path in life set for you. And if you don't like this, you can pivot there. But then this isn't open to you anymore either. So it's like, you've really got to think super, super carefully about what you want to spend your time doing. You're going to die one day, bro. Like, you know, it's, you know, like, you, you, you've, you've got to make sure that you're okay with doing what you're doing while you can do everything that's in front of you. You know, and, and that, and that's uh, honestly, man, it's a, it's a, it's an uncomfortable thought, you know, that. Like, okay, I'm a, I'm a car guy, but like, where's my skiing, you know, chapter in life? Like, you know, it's, if, if I open that one, I might not be able to drive as, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's yeah. a stupid example, but no matter what you do, you're, you're closing other doors on the other side. And um, especially, you know, I, I, want, I was going to say, especially if you're young, but like, you know, I, I feel like, you know, I, I, I did, I had my massive come up for the first time when I was in my kind of mid teens and uh, late teens as well. You know, and was that enough? I don't know. Like, I mean, it depends where you want to get to, you know, like there's a whole life out there of you know, many, many, many millions of people are living that people like you and I probably don't even know about yet. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah, I love this. Don't yeah. even know about bro. Like, I, I didn't even know that people were partying in St. Bartholomew, some <laughs> random island near the United States for New Year's. I didn't even know that was happening with the most beautiful jaw dropping stunning women in the world yeah. you know with all their massive super yacht. i didn't even know the place existed bro like <laughs> i don't even get a chance to say i want to go there because i don't know that it, it exists yeah man you know really gets you thinking and there are people they've never changed a single thing they're still there hey no judgment i don't care as long as you are happy do whatever you want right but that's that they ain't for me like i need to try things i've changed so many jobs man i've done everything even now i'm, I'm a freaking 45 years old youtuber three months ago like hell why not you know i love <laughs> okay, this man. This, yeah, you nice, know, nice, nice. Like I said, you have to be ready to face some challenges. Of course, it's not going to be an easy ride. Like I, I had a really lovely job that I built, but I've changed through the time. You know, I was a creative director, but before I was a developer, I built my own way into the IT wave. And I see crypto going to the same route. Can't go to the general public and talk about visionary ideas. 
Because they're just not, like, and why would they be? Like, they're living their life, they're chilling, they're doing what they want to do. Like, they're not thinking about, like, oh, yeah, some f blockchain project is going to change. They don't care. Like, if it's going to come, it's going to come, and they'll end up using yeah. it. And it'll be one big, you know, one number out of many, many, many other numbers. And, you know, basically a cog in the machine. And that's okay. Like, again, you know, if you know your place in life, and, and I, I think, you know, the, the one thing I would have added to, to what you said is, like, you, you mentioned, like, a lot of people live their life, and they're, like, in their community, and they're doing the same thing their whole life, and that's totally cool if they want to. Mm -hmm. But my, my addendum to that um, is... I at least want the person to know what is out there because it would Fair. like what a tragedy point. it would be if they what didn't. I missed. Yeah, 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 exactly. What, what they're missing? But I don't know. Not not my business, right? A lot of people might say, well, you know, because because it's true. Like the more you know that's out there, the more the desire and you know expectations and so on. So that can start to yeah. you know take away from your happiness. So maybe not. The the one thing I wanted to mention, I thought this was really interesting, is you know we've got a certain user base in crypto right now. And, and there's conflicting numbers on this, but the one that really jumped out to me, I think it was in 2021 or 2022, was people were talking about like 30% of all people in the United States own some crypto in 2022. And that was like a super bullish headline, you know? And, uh, and, and, and to me, I was like, you know, at first I read that, I was like, oh yeah, that's super cool. Like, you know, bullish to the moon, whatever, you know? And then a super smart guy who thinks logically uh, came out and he was a crypto Kirby, by the way, super okay. cool trader. Yeah, shout out, yeah. Yeah, I love him. He's one of my favorite role models in trading. He came out on YouTube and he was like, well, look, if 30% of people in the United States hold crypto, then they've already bought. Like that, those dollars that could have gone in the way, sure, they might have more on the side, but let's be real. If you've pressed the green button already, the only other button to press is the red one. Time to get bullish, the time to get excited for the market's potential for financial returns is when the only button available is the green button. And, and I think that's a really big deal. Um, you know, people get really caught up with saying, well, look at the adoption, look at this, look at that, look at this. Look, it's like, chill, man. If, if the adoption has happened, like, sure, you might be looking for more adoption, but I'm interested in getting there before people have, re have even clicked the green button. Yeah. If we're talking about money, that's yeah. where you want to be. But think about it. Amazon started off selling books. Again, like, think about Virgin, which is like, Fantastic, another fantastic example. You know, they started off with something. Spaceship program, bro. Spaceship Virgin program. Galactic, <laughs> just, just to say <laughs> you. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, it, it goes to say that at the end of the day, like pivoting is, is probably one of the most interesting things. And like you said, you know, the advantage is going in before everything else is going in. Where do you see us going in, in the next six months to a year? You know, um, I've been bullish on Bitcoin since the bottom. Uh, okay, I'll be honest, when we were down at 15 K, I was like, you know, but like 17K around there, I've been pretty bullish calling for 30,000 and, and possibly 40. And that outlook has not changed. So we hit 30, but we haven't hit 40 yet. And, uh, and, and I'm not so confident about 40. I wasn't so confident back then. My confidence levels in this analysis has not changed at all since the bottom, which is good. That tells me that the original analysis was very solid, oh, solid so I can yeah. trust that. I'm, I still think 40 is definitely possible. Uh, I, like I said, don't know how likely. What I will say is I, I'm, a, I'm a chart guy. What I will say is the 30K level is rock solid resistance. It was super solid support for an incredibly long period of time. Yeah. And now it's rock solid resistance. But uh, the more you test these levels, the more you hit these levels, the more likely they are to break. So uh, we've now tested it two times on a macro scale this year. Uh, and if we continue up, it's going to be a third and fourth potentially, whatever. So I definitely think that there's some potential for upside. Uh, I think that the ETF news is promising. Um, what I will say on that note, and, and this is again, like what I really want to take a realistic approach to things. When I see everybody is touting the halving or the ETF as being like this massive thing that's going to help Bitcoin, mm -hmm. I get very cautious because here, here's the thing ultimately, and it's the reason that I on Discord groups and Telegram groups so much is because if you're in discussion communities about crypto, or even if you're talking to other people about crypto, like just that simple, it, the likelihood that you are engaging with the 90% and understanding that the 90% of those who lose money the likelihood that you're engaging with the 90% is incredibly high. And it's not just because, you know, well, nine times out of 10, it's going to be that guy. It's also because that 10% is not in these groups. Like th th that 10% of people, you're not going to find them, bro. Like they're going to be like talking amongst themselves, you know, like in private groups that it's not even like invite only. There's just, it's a group of guys and that is it. They're not, they don't even want new people. They don't yeah. need them. And, uh, and, and I think this is really important. You know, when I, and this is one of the most common things I say on the YouTube channel is look, if you are putting out a piece, a piece of analysis yourself and then finding that everybody agrees with you, f***ing alarm bells need to go off. You know, like, I mean, uh, I'm not saying be totally, you know, have no faith in yourself or anything yeah, yeah. because, you know, th there's nuance to this. The other side of this is like, look, when everybody is in agreement, 
that's when you break twenty thousand dollars for the first time and you rally up to 30 40k so like you have to apply nuance yeah, and common sense yeah, measure it, yeah. um you know but when we're in a market like right now what i'm describing this thought process of look if i'm agreeing with everybody i need to back off this is actually very useful now okay if you're in a super aggressive bull market and everybody's bullish you can be a little bit more lax with this and you can apply it a little bit more uh, but i think that's important so we talk about etfs and halvings everybody and their grandmother is talking about this right now uh, I agree, you know, on a fundamental level, I fully agree. Like ETF, how can that be bearish, right? I mean, you know, like you have to buy spot Bitcoin, so yep. it can literally only soak up the demand. I'm sorry, soak up the supply. Supply, yeah. Um, and then the halving, I mean, we're talking about reduced supply. So I mean, th these are just based on a basic macroeconomic yeah, level. Exactly. <laughs> it's super, like just, just normal math. It's obvious that this should result in the prices going up. December 2017, there was the CME futures that launched and everybody was super excited for this weeks and months in advance. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but you know the, the futures launch just enabled institutional players to short the market, and that like we didn't even think about that. Like we were in massive bull mode, everything looked possible. Twenty seven k looked like the next step after twenty k, yeah. um, so it just looked super obvious, you know. But these institutional players came in, knowing what was actually going on, not having you know like this massive emotional attachment to the game, and they just went short. Now, is that the same thing as ETF? No, it's not. It, you know, futures and ETFs are not the same thing, but. Uh, although you can't have them, but this is a spot ETF, and that's why it's a big deal—the BlackRock exactly. one that everyone's talking them, yeah. about. So it is different, and it is better, uh, you know. But uh, but what I'm urging everybody is to uh, take a couple steps back, uh, if for no other reason, so that we don't have to dump. Because if everybody is so <laughs> bullish, it's probably going to happen. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and the other big thing that I want to point out, and um, we're just being realistic, we're all going to agree on this, is that banks and big players with deep pockets do not make the average guy rich uh and i, and I don't know where this weird fantasy is coming from that yeah. blackrock is going to come here and save your finances and yeah, no, help yeah, you get yeah. an axe back like that it's not happening you know like the way these people get in the market is how jp morgan in 2018 you know jamie dimon just talks absolute yeah absolute Tank trash the about price. the market tanks it down to three thousand dollars accumulates as many yeah as can. yeah keeps talking you know and then <laughs> buys it under the radar <laughs> yeah. and then sells back to you you know at the top you know, and, and that's how these guys work. So, you know, like whoever has got this fantasy of like, you know, these institutional guys are going to come in, Vanguard, you know, whatever, are, are going to come in and, and, and buy all of our Bitcoin, you know, and send the price higher. Like, bro, I can, you know, I mean, I'm as close to certain as I've ever been that that is not how this is going to work. Um, you know, much more likely, although still not guaranteed, much more likely is that they will tank the price uh, and then buy, uh, and then you will buy it at the top again. Cause, cause that's how that's how us that, that that's how us crypto traders do it. We buy high and we sell low. That's 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 the way it works. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, and, and and I say us loosely, but I mean like the whole you know kind of industry in general. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Majority of the people they they buy the top and sell the bottom for sure. I'm I'm talking to myself specifically. I have to learn how to manage the profit taking moment yeah. because I've done a few cycles and, and I suck at it because of greed and because okay. of fear. Those two are the emotions. They always tamper with your brain and they go. Oh, I was visioning at least 90 100k so my my old cash out plan was built on you know but again maybe i should have been more flexible and looking at the chart a little bit more i mean i'm not a trader i'm, I'm kind of a someone who invests in the long time bitcoin mainly because it's the one that i like the most even though it's a conservative move but it works for me i like it we, we need to address this actually because um people go very aggressive in the crypto space but the point that i like to make is if you look at any other traditional finance market whether it's commodities forex stocks anything indices anything Bitcoin is, yes, it's conservative, but compared to any of these other traditional finance um, assets that, that are available and markets that are available, Bitcoin is incredibly aggressive. And this is the oh, point yeah. that I'm making is like, if you're leverage trading or if you're trading altcoins and stuff, like before you even do that, before you even put your money on the exchange, let's just have a conversation about how risky this is, like on an absolute <laughs> scale. <laughs> yeah. I understand that relative to, I don't know, Cardano, Ethereum is not that risky, sure. But compared to a normal asset, exactly. It's a like, let's, let's, let's just place. I mean, just just good financial hygiene. Like, let's just yeah. understand where on the risk spectrum yeah. we're actually putting our money. Yeah. that's really important. That's a that's a conversation you need to have with yourself. You know, I've got nothing against all of these. Actually, I have a lot against all of these coins. But you know, it's not my business. I don't care. Like, if you want to buy these coins, it's your job. But you know, for me, the the, the I'm, I'm exactly like you. Uh, I'm I'm in I'm in Bitcoin massively, and I understand that that is a massive move in the aggressive direction yeah. you know for, for for allocating your capital yeah you know, i mean it's way more aggressive than like 
anything else that was ever available before crypto existed. Where do you find an asset who goes up 100% in, in, in sometimes like a couple of months or whatever? Casually, like, bro. It's just nuts. Why would you want to be so greedy to go into some food coin or, or dog coin or whatever? Isn't that enough? Like, are you going from losing money to keep them in the bank to making, like, I remember in the bull market, like, in various bull markets, there's time where it's going 20% a day, man. Like, yeah. bam, bam, bam. I mean, this is a huge Insane. amount of yeah. money. And, and, and this, is, this, is, this is a point that I make when we start talking about coins is, um, and, and I'm calling it coins. Yeah, I'm, same. I'm, I'm talking about every single one of them. Um, you know, one, one of the things you need to consider is like, okay, you, you will make more money if these coins go up than Ethereum or Bitcoin. You will make more money. That's correct. However, how much are you going to risk? You know, so like we, we've, got, we've got to look at this. Uh, really sensibly. I mean, we're talking about money, right? Like yeah, it, it pays yeah. to be sensible here. Yeah. If you stand to make 50% more money with a coin compared to Bitcoin, but your risk goes up by 5x, is that proportionally worth it? Exactly. You know, and, that, and that's a just you know that that that's a discussion you need to have with yourself. That's a consideration you need to, you need to make on your own. Um, you know, are you going to make 30% more money but risk your money two times more? You know, and and if that's the case, like what I end up saying is like you know because I've been like I've done all this. Like I've, I've done each of these little you know, ways to try and make money. The one I found that works the best is margin trading. And for me, the reason for that is because with Bitcoin being a much more conservative crypto, but mm -hmm. still a very aggressive asset in general, I can understand what Bitcoin is doing a lot more. It's a lot less subject to manipulation than any coin that's ever been made ever, uh, you know, purely because it's so much more spread out. Uh, so much older, yeah. Um, you know, and and not nearly as centralized as any of the other coins. So you know, it, it it's it's a lot less, it's a lot harder to manipulate. You can understand what's going on a little bit more, and then you know, we talk about like, okay, well, you're gonna make this much more reward, but you're gonna make this much more risk. Well, you can control that a lot mm -hmm. more closely if you're trading with leverage than if you're trading an altcoin, because with an altcoin, you've got factors that are like completely out of your control, like the team just deciding to rug pull or whatever, for example, yeah. as an easy example. But there, there's so many more bad things a team can do. They can just get lazy. They, they, they can just start partying with the money that you gave them. You know, like anything can yeah. happen. With Bitcoin, you can control that risk a lot more. And that's why I find it to be a much sensible, a much more sensible, much smarter, um, you know, kind of place to park money in. And then, of course, to trade as well, uh, because now you can really fine tune uh, and, and control that risk that you're taking on, which is... Uh, incredibly useful, you know. I mean, uh, to, to you know, I mean, you know, if you're putting your money anywhere where you don't know 150,000 percent exactly what's going on, you know, then, then that's a problem. It's like by the time you lose your money, by the time Luna crashes or whatever the case may be, uh, you've also now lost your opportunity to make money. So yeah. you know, and, and that's and and this this is this is the single most important thing that I tell people that want to trade is like, look, your number one priority as a trader is to not lose money. Uh, because you know it's like it's like having a bucket with a hole in it and you're trying to fill it up with water right like you know I mean it's got a hole in the bottom it doesn't matter how much you fill it up it doesn't matter how high the pressure it's is going out. it's still it's still going out bro like there's no yeah. there's no working around that so uh, it's about plugging these holes and making sure that you can't lose money and we, when you've got a really good like bulletproof uh, system it a good system will make it hard to lose money that's that's what I like to tell people uh, if you're you know if you're losing money and if you're losing a lot of money you've got a system but um, like I struggle to lose money these days because you know I don't deviate from my system. That's number one. That's the most important thing. And the system puts it in place so that like you know if I'm suffering some losses or whatever, there's like 15 different protections that go in place to make sure that yeah. you know I'm not gonna make the next wrong decision or, or whatever the case may be. Uh, and these are really important, you know. Uh, I, and, and of course I, I'm gonna go back to what I said at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, the number one thing I would say for anyone that wants to trade is don't stay on your screen. Don't look at it. Don't do anything. Do your own analysis, set your targets. I'm sorry, no, set, uh, set your alerts yeah. for you know, like when you're going to take action and that's it. Just go away, do something else. I love it. It's such a, such a good advice. I completely agree with you. And, you know, it goes back to what I said in the beginning, right? Like make money is easy, keep money, it's hard. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's, and you know, like you talk about like profit taking at the top. That's not easy. Um, you know, I, I was one of the best financial, the second best financial decision I ever made in my life was selling Bitcoin at 57K to buy my villa here in Dubai. Yeah, I remember you posted it a couple of days ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was like a more than $1 million house. But how was I able to make that decision? Well, it was only because I f***ed up 10 million times before this in <laughs> yeah. shorter term trades that yeah. I understood the importance of profit taking. But if you're just, I don't want to say just like it's a bad thing, but if you're just mm -hmm. an investor or you're not trading that regularly, you're not really going to have, you, you have not had the opportunity to learn those lessons yet. Like this lesson you described to me about like not sitting at the top. Bro, I learned that lesson on like day trades. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. that, that's why I didn't make the mistake where it really mattered. 
And that's that's really important because as, as a trader, like you're you're in such a high ROI, such a high leverage environment. Even if you're not applying leverage, just being in the markets is, is leveraging your money. You know, where just one good decision, bro, like can make a big difference. I mean, you know, for, for a lot of the best traders in the world, it always comes down, always, always comes down to a handful, if not slightly more, but really not, you know, generally not even more than a handful of trades per year that contribute to the biggest, you know, successes, uh, or of course, the biggest blunders, you know, I mean, uh, it, it's high leverage, it works in both directions, you know, I mean, uh, you're, you're really accelerated, it's like driving at like 250 miles per hour, like a little stone's going to mess you up. Yeah, indeed. And like you said, you know, the one of the most important thing I couldn't agree more, you know, you have to have a plan, but you have to action it. it it's, it's, it's a tricky one. Um, because yeah, you, you need to you need to stick to your plan. But at the same time, it's not flexible, you won't even get out in the first place. You know, I, I, I wish I could say how to fix this. Uh, the only way I've found and, and the thing that I do is um, I don't wait for certain levels to come for me to start taking profits, I should do it very aggressively. Um, and the reason for this is a great example with one of my trades that I'm still in right now is a, is a TRX long. Nice. Uh, I hate coins, but dude, I'll trade them. I'll make money yeah, off yeah, them. Yeah. I got no problem with making money, bro. Yeah. And, um, you know, so I went long on TRX. It was just a normal old resistance flipped into support, went long. I mean, it's so stupidly simple the way I trade. <laughs> you know, people think I've got like crazy secrets. I promise you, I don't have any secrets. I'm just, I'm just going long off support, bro, and I'm going short at resistance. It's that simple. Okay, it's simple, yeah. Yeah, and um, and and I took profits aggressively. I mean, that that position now, if I'd never took any profits, I would have more than doubled my capital. Um, you know, I mean, just massive, massive gains. But I took massive profits before I even got there. And the reason I'm not upset about that at all is because um, I sat down and did the math on this a long time ago, and it was basically, look. You said yourself, in bull markets, Bitcoin can pull 20, 30% candles in a day, like it's nothing. Uh, you know, and that, you know, just in a day, like what about in two, three days? What about in a week? You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just month. so crazy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, in a month, bro. So, you know, what I looked at was like, okay, if you pull three 30% profits in a row, which is not easy, you've got to do it in a row consecutively, but if you pull off three 30% profits in a row, it doesn't matter what capital you're starting with, you will double it. Yeah. You know, and if you take it, and, and so one of the things I've done is like, okay, with leverage trading, it's actually really easy to hit 30% profit. Like it's kind of just the fluctuation, you know, like if you yeah. like 10x leverage, you need a 3% move, like 3% move from right now is what, like seven, $800 of price action. It's nothing. It's, it's yeah. nothing, bro. Yeah. Like that happens like that. So, you know, like it really doesn't take much to hit that kind of 30% profit. And if you don't get greedy and if you don't look for, okay, well it's 30% now, but it could be 700%, you know, or, or whatever, replace 700, it could be 40, it could be 45. If you just if you're just satisfied with that thirty, or you're satisfied with that fifty, or whatever, you got to make these numbers yours mm -hmm. and, and make them work for you, um, you know. But if you just close them, and every time they hit that profit number, we're not going for these. We're not gambling here, right? So we're not looking for these big home runs. I totally understand. On one side, I was saying, look, only a handful of trades will make you as a trader every year. That's correct. But to actually, you know, to to, to expect that every single trade will turn into them is going to really work against you, you know. So if you actually go for this setup of instead well you know like 30 percent is good enough i'm just going to close every time i hit 30 percent, just like that look okay you might you might even miss a home run but you're going to double your money you know consistently if you follow this kind of this is assuming that you're not losing money in between this is not perfect yeah. every you know if, if there's anything i can say about trading is that it's gonna be frustrating and it's not gonna work the way you expect it to 100 percent of the time um you know it it, it, just, it just doesn't work that way where things happen perfectly uh, reality is so much more boring than what you think of in your mind. You know, I was saying this back when uh, we were down, like when, when we were first hitting 30K earlier this year, uh, so many, many months ago, I was saying, look, guys, I hate to say it to you on YouTube. This is like the worst thing I could say on YouTube, uh, you know, because it will tell you that the market might be boring. But I was like, hey, you know, we might just... We might just trade sideways for the rest of this year, you know, yeah. between 30K and 25. And yeah, that's it. Mm. I, I, I know it's shit, but like, you know, I mean, it's not going to stop me from telling you the truth kind of thing, you know, and, that, and that's basically what I said. And, uh, and that's exactly what happened, you know, and, and this is the thing that, that we need to understand is like the markets are a lot more boring than you kind of expect them to be. Um, they're not as explosive to the upside or to the downside. Everyone was calling for $12,000. That didn't happen either. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I just 12K, I think 12K was a pretty realistic you know, price Tablets. target, considering where Bitcoin was going. I yeah. wasn't calling for it. I wasn't calling for anything because um, I know better than to make predictions when I have no 
clue what's going on. This is a really important thing. Like, you, you know, you don't need to have an opinion on everything. You know, you just need to have an opinion when you've got conviction behind it and then you put money behind it. But otherwise, it's okay to not even trade. It's okay to not participate. You're protecting yourself. Uh, but yeah, I think that was, a, that, that, that was a really, really important point that I think a lot of people don't even get. It. A lot of people, you know, they're, they're, they're going to go through whatever direction that they took when they start trading crypto or whatever the case may be and they won't even have a chance to learn these lessons it is part of the game right one of the reasons why people leave the market is because nothing happens and then you will go back to a place where you know people leave the market and everything stays still until something happens and everyone comes in it's it's really important to not lose focus during these kind of periods of chop and yeah. consolidation because um and i've seen it myself with, with the vip group i was telling you about before mm -hmm. Um, we've made millionaires, bro. We've made incredibly successful traders out of that group. And because I've had a role in kind of helping these guys get to where they've gotten to, uh, I've seen that, you know, like when you lose courage and lose focus and lose attention, like you stop paying attention during times like now, at the time of recording, we're what, like middle of October, yeah. um, you are going to exclude yourself from the next wave of cash that's yeah. coming. And that that's a problem, you know, because like if you've gotten this far, you know what I mean? And and then you take yourself out of it. Like, I don't care if it's six months away or one month away. Just the fact that you've gotten this far and you've now taken yourself out of it, what a shame. Um, but if you, and, and this is the thing, is like, the analogy I give is like, you've got to be a soldier that is ready for deployment at any moment's notice all the time, 100% of the time. You know, and that's, that's kind of frustrating. I, I put out a tweet about this just yesterday. I was like, most of your life as a trader is just going to be making sure that you're ready for deployment. That's it. Yeah. You know, like you're just waiting, you're just sitting there, you're keeping your tools sharp, you're keeping your mind sharp, you're making sure you're healthy, you're making sure your family's taken care of, whatever you need to do so that you don't, you know, compromise your decision-making processes, um, but you're just staying ready. And, uh, and, and that's really, really important. The people that stay ready are always the future millionaires of the market. Always. No exceptions. They are yeah. always the future millionaires of the market. The people that stay ready, that stay paying attention, that stay focused during the kind of winter periods and, and it kind of makes sense you know like if you stick around you'll you know you'll get bitcoin you'll if harvest you, yeah. Yeah. yeah if you can't tolerate bitcoin at its at its boringest you can't have it at its bestest exactly you know, that's, a, that's a funny way to put it <laughs> exactly i like to call them build market not bear market there you go i like that yeah because <laughs> you're building relationship you're building yourself you're building knowledge but hey sam you know you're busy so i'm i could stay here all night talking to you thank you so much for coming thank in you, today it's you. been an absolute pleasure guys i'm gonna leave in the comments down below all sammy's links so you can go and find out in case you don't know you are missing out big time so i hope you have your game in the studio it's been an absolute pleasure thank you bro thank you Take i'll see you on cheers. the next one cheers